Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by DevTaps. This is the last in the Photoshop Basic CS5 tutorials. Um, this is the one to do with photo manipulation and uh, today we're going to be working on this uh, picture of Stonehenge and we're going to be going from this to this. Now there are a few niches in this, like this area here that needs to be straightened out. This is only adds this area here which wasn't very well done but um, I was very short of time so uh, can be done better than that but we'll probably go over that and you'll see in the tutorial. So uh, yeah. to start off with um, we need to make this photo uh, a seamless tile, so we need to get all these edges well, just the uh, left and right edges seamless. So first of all, to start off with, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee selection tool and select that area there. Press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to paste, copy and paste it. Go over to the pick tool, grab it and pull it over here to cover up those trees over there. Now if I try and get that vaguely in line it's not really going to be much use so I'm going to pull out a ruler. If you haven't got the ruler selected it's Control R or uh, click on the view and it's there under rulers. Um, to grab out a ruler what we need to do is click and drag out and line it up with the horizon this end and then bring this down to the same level. Now you can still see that there is a certain little bit just there. So if we press Ctrl T to enter the transformation tool, we can drag that out. Doesn't matter about covering the head, the stone at the moment, and hit enter. And now we can zoom in by pressing Ctrl Plus on the keyboard and navigate over there with the scroll bars here. Now the easiest way I've found to be able to remove that rather than erasing very delicately around it is by selecting the initial background layer there no sorry the initial picture not the background layer actually to stop me from getting confused I'm going to delete that layer um, and go to the quick selection tool make sure you're adding to the selection and a brush around 30, 35 and just turn off this layer temporarily. Now we can select the stone part here without having to keep going back and forth and checking it. Now all we need to do is select this layer and enable it again by clicking on the eye and pressing delete and pressing control D to deselect. This creates a, uh, erases the selection around the hen and uh, then we can just simply erase the rest of it using a brush size of 130 and without any hardness to it so it just sort of nicely blends out and do it oh. no it's a little bit too soft so just add a hardness up for this bit just to remove that hard line there that's right that won't be, it's not going to be perfect it's just for yeah that's fine um, so that's that end and that end done but as you can see here there isn't that much uh, you can see like trees and that in the background but I think that would be alright actually I think yeah that's all the editing we need to do there to get our left and right seamless now that isn't as you can see it isn't quite in line with the ruler here so I'll just zoom in and go over to the pick tool and hit Control T to enter the transformation mode. I can right click and go to perspective and bring in the perspective a little bit and hit enter. And now you can see that it's start, starting to bring back these trees over this area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the eyedropper and grab that colour there and go over to the paintbrush 
Yeah. I just. Okay, I don't know where that spot came from. But I'm literally going to. What? What's going on here? Oh, uh, yes, of course. Make sure your brush settings haven't got scattering on or shape dynamics because otherwise you'll get bits and pieces all over the bloody place. So now I can just smoothly go over that. And that's it. Uh, actually, I don't think that is in my. Oh, yeah, that's better. Right, so. Now we need to flatten all these layers here to make it into that one image. And now we can do the amazing part, which is incredibly easy. Go to image size, and this is actually, wait, as you can see in this, there's a little bit too much sky for my liking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the crop tool, and I'm going to crop out quite a bit of that sky, about that much, maybe a little bit more, that's it, like that. And now we can start doing that by going to image, image size, and it will be incredibly out of proportion, but it needs to be square. So by default you've got const the constraint proportions option on. So if you come down here and click on the tick box and deselect that, you can mess around with the dimensions as much as you like. And for the width and the height we've got here, I think we'll go... 1000 by 1000 and then you can, as you can see it takes it way out of proportion and it's horrible. Now what we need to do is just flip it 180 degrees so if we just rotate you just flip, flip vertical. Then go to filter come down to blur, uh, sorry distort polar coordinates and make sure you have the rectangular to polar option selected and hit OK. Now as you can see that's made our nice little sort of planet and uh, now for the part where I kind of messed up on my first time round is using the spot healing brush I'm going to drag a line down on the sky to get rid of that nasty line you can see that's done quite well there but I think it's a different ball game for when it comes to this area here. We can give it a try again, I suppose, but it sort of warps it and makes it all horrible and pixelated. So, a better way of doing it is by using the clone stamp tool and holding down Alt and clicking and dragging into this one here, into that line. You can see that's a sort of working really. Make sure you get like a, a variation of the sides, the size of the lines, because otherwise it will look a little bit more repetitive and horrible, like I've just made it look. So maybe you might want to, after you've done that, then use a spot healing brush. Just click on that spot, and it still makes it look awful. No, that's no good. Um, maybe increase the brush size. Yeah, because the smaller the brush size. So if we just go back through our history and try and get rid of as many clone stamps as possible. And now do it with a bigger brush size. We don't seem to get as much repetition there. And it makes it look loads better. A bit different there with that sort of circle bit there. We'll go over that in a second. But for now, we can just select another bit there. And the layer, I'm going to here, and click. Now press Ctrl T to edit that layer and rotate it round. And bring it down round into it because it's a very circular sort of piece of work and now 
the last little bit of the spot healing brush attempts. That brush or that tool is awful to use. Um, but I'm going to run out of time here, so if you can just basically the last little bit is just to get rid of that little spot there. So by going to the back to the clone stamp and clicking there and bringing that bit in maybe. Mm, this could look quite feasible and Yeah, I think that's it now then. You can still sort of see the line, but you might want to spend a little bit more time on that part. That is the trickiest part of this this uh, tutorial, really. The most time consuming, but I've only got like a minute left on this video now, so uh, I think I'll end it there. And um, that's the end of the uh, Photoshop series one, the basics. I think I will probably come back to Photoshop doing a few more video tutorials, maybe on different effects that I pick up on. And uh, thank you very much for watching this whole series. If you have watched the whole series, if you haven't, then uh, you, uh, you're you interested. On my channel there is a playlist you can go on to. And uh, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. I'm very appreciative of your... Uh, contribution to my channel. Thanks again, and I'll be seeing you in some other tutorials. Goodbye!